Hello, thank you for joining me once again on the Basic Academy. On today's video, we shall be looking at how to estimate shocks in a single equation model. Essentially, how to estimate shocks in a single equation model. First thing here we need to explain is the meaning of single equation model. A model is single when only the independent variables affect the dependent variable, while the dependent variable does not in turn affect the independent variable. That is, a single equation model has only one dependent variable and one or more independent variables. Now, looking at the meaning of shock, shock is a measure of the unexpected changes in the variable that are not explained by the model. These unexpected changes can be caused by a variety of factors such as sudden changes in government policy, natural disasters, or technological shocks. Now, how is shock estimated in a model? In a regression framework, residual represent the difference between the observed values and the values predicted by the model, according to Woodridge 2012. In a time series context, however, especially with autoregressive models, residuals capture the unexpected changes or surprises in a series after accounting for its own past values. The economic, the economic meaning of residual from the autoregressive process is the shock of that equation according to Quinn and Gilbert in 2000 and 2001. In other words, the residual is a measure of the shock. In an autoregressive model, the residual at each time, at each time period is often referred to as a shock or innovation. This term captures the new information that was not predicted based on the past values of the variable. In an economic context, when you run an autoregressive process, you are modeling a variable based on its lagged, based on its own lagged values. The idea is that the past values of a series can provide information about its future values according to Enders 2014. However, the real world is unpredictable and there are always unexpected events or shocks. In the context of an autoregressive model, these unexpected events are captured by the residuals. Mathematically, in an autoregressive process, the residual is the difference between the actual value of the variable and value predicted by the model. In particular, an autoregressive model of order P, ARP, is given as this, where we have yt equals to alpha plus summation beta and the the period one and the lagged period of the dependent variable here plus the error term as shown in equation one here. Here, why is it why is the variable of interest and alpha is the constant? This is beta are the parameters of parameters to be estimated, and et here is the error term or residual at time t. In the simplest form, a one variable autoregressive model of order one that ar1 might be specified as this captured in equation two here. The residuals from this equation too here represent the part of yt, which is the variable that cannot be explained by its own past values. In other words, it's the new information that arrives at each point in time, which was not predicted based on past values of yt. The error term, which is this et here, or residual, represent the part of yt that cannot be explained by its past values. This residual or shock is typically considered to be a random, unpredictable component, which is what introduces uncertainty or volatility in the process. Thus, from, econo from an economic perspective, the residual is indeed a shock or unexpected dis disturbances of the series, or unexpected disturbance of the series to the series. Now, looking at residuals as shocks, in a single equation AR process, the residual can be interpreted as a shock to that specific variable. In a multivariate VAR framework, each equation's residual represents a shock to that specific variable while controlling for the lags of all included variables. These residuals or shock can then be used in impulse response functions to trace, to trace out the effect of one-time shock to one of the innovations on current and future values of indigenous variables, according to Hamilton 1994 and Sims 1980. Now let's take an example. Supposing we want to investigate the impact of interest rate shocks on economic growth in Nigeria. Here the interest rate represents the independent variable, while the dependent variable here is economic growth proves it with our GDP. So capturing it in a single in a simple equation here, we have our GDP equals to 
and the intercept here which is the constant plus the coefficient of int which is interest rate plus the error term ut specifying only int in an auto regressive form is mathematically captured as this in equation 4 and interest rate sure is mathematically specified as where the estimated residual from equation 4 here is made the subject of the formula so what it simply means here that for us to get the interest rate shock that we are interested in investigating um, its impact on economic growth we need to extract the shock from this model which which uh, which is exactly um, represented as in equation 4 here we are int which is the interest rate is made to be a function of its past value here then the error term from this equation 4 represent the shock from this for this particular interest rate so which means here here which means here that interest rate shock is mathematically specified as where the estimated residual from equation 4 is made subject to the formula so once you make the error term from this equation 4 subject to the formula here it presents the shock for interest rate we are going to show you how to do this in the part 2 of this video using eview so in the part 2 of the and uh, the next video we shall look at how to estimate this using eviews okay now these are some of the cited references that will guide you in the course of this particular explanation here all this explanation we are generated from this particular reference is captured here okay so in our part two we're going to show you how to estimate this particular shock first we're going to generate the residual from from the um, interest rate value here when we regress the interest rate on its past period we extract the residual and then I'm showing you how to, you're going to use it to now look at how it has impacted economic growth in our next video. Okay, thank you for watching and thank you for listening. For, thank you for listening and kindly share this video for whoever might be interested in using it for his or her research work. Thank you.